The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. There we go. My brother and sister in Christ, it's about, it's about complaining. Complaining. It's the middle 1800s, close to the 1900s, and Napoleon III has a problem. He's about to embark on a great war. The problem is food is in short supply. Preservatives of food is in short supply. Uh, dressings, if you will, for food is in extremely short supply. So he issues a proclamation to all saying if anybody can come up with a, a preservative of sorts, if somebody can come up with a dressing of sorts, if something can come up with something that you could add to food or to sandwiches or to meals that would make it taste a little better but make it a little more enticing, man, my kingdom and my reward upon you will be great. There's a guy by the name of Mayhenge. He's a pharmacist by trade. And he does what most pharmacists do. Man, they're in it. Man, he comes up with a test. He retested it. He reapplies it. He remarkets it. He goes back. He fixes it. Does it again. He comes up with the ideal dressing, the, the ideal spread, if you will. As a result, man, the king, Napoleon, is beside himself, and he offers it to him, and he tells him, man, you get everything. Whatever you want, a king's ransom will be paid upon you. As a result of such, man, can I tell you, he thinks it's great in France. He says, man, I can't wait to get this to the United States. Huge mistake. He gets to the United States, and man, complaint after complaint after complaint. People started drawing up sides against him. Competitors were saying, there's something wrong with it. It doesn't taste good. It's not good for you. It's unhealthy. Man, we had farmers. We had pharmacists. We had, we had everybody complaining. As a matter of fact, 38 of the states have decided to tax his product. Nobody else's. It almost breaks him. As a matter of fact, Brother Christ, one, one state said, we're not going to tax you, but it can't be yellow. It's now got to be pink. And he said, well, I can't make it pink. Then you don't sell it. Do you know Mayhenge dies broke? He dies broke because all people did was complain. Even though you and I, 100 years later, use it almost every day. Every sandwich, every spread, every cracker, every this, every that. He invents margarine. No, he, he invents margarine, my brother and sister in Christ. Now I, know, now I know what the death is on the, way to the, on the way to the forum. My brother and sister in Christ, it's about complaining. That is exactly what you did not hear in the gospel. Not one time does Christ complain. I have no sin. I could have come any way I wanted. I surely didn't deserve this. Not one time do I hear his mother complain. What did he do? What did I do? I mean, all we did was bring the Messiah into the world. The blind see, the lame walk, the dead rise. No good deed goes uncrucified. Even John's got the argument. Look, I just know him. But more importantly, what did he do that's so blasphemous? Proclaim he's God? Did anybody else cure the blind? The lame walk, the dead rise? You know what's amazing, my brother and sister in Christ? He carries a cross 12 foot tall, 8 foot wide. Now, according to St. Elizabeth, uh, St. Matilda, St. Bridget, St. Catherine Emmerich, they actually got to see the crucifixion play out. So he carries a cross 12 foot tall, 8 foot wide. He carries the entire cross. My brother in Christ, that's a massive structure. He carries it one mile for three hours. My brothers and sisters in Christ, do you understand what he went through? According to the saints, let me explain. They said that they punched him in the head, if you will, over 150 times. They spit in his face, according to the saints, over 180 times. Somebody spits in your face one time. I bet I know where you're at for the next 24 to 36 hours. Right up the street. They offered over 1,000 insults. 1,000 in about six hours' time. You and I get one insult, one bad comment, email, text message. We're about to take a hostage. We've done calls six friends. We talked to our spouse. We talked to our family. We have vented in and out constantly. 1,000 insults. And he never responds. Do you know the way it works in the Roman days is they have what they call the town crier. His job is to walk roughly 100 or 50 feet in front, holding the I-N-R-I, letting everybody know you're crying. 
He is circled about with 600 soldiers that were part of the procession. Of the 600 soldiers, 80 were responsible for protecting him or mocking him or insulting him or spitting on him or pushing him. Imagine if 83 people followed you everywhere you went for just an hour, much less six. I mean, imagine if they pushed you and shoved you and cursed you and spit on you and beat on you. My brother Christ, did you know the crown of thorns alone has over 100 wounds to his head? The crown of thorns. He has 20 legitimate holes from the crown of thorns, of which three are fatal. If they never touch him, he will die from the crown of thorns alone. My brothers and sisters in Christ, not counting the six-inch spikes that went through his hands, and just so you know, we do believe they had to dislocate. We actually believe they dislocated both soldiers, both shoulders, excuse me. Not, not to mention the 16-inch spike that went through both feet. And according to the saints, they didn't get it right the first time, so they had to back it out and do it again. It's hard to find good help these days. Do you know they dropped the crucifix twice with him on it? My brother and sister in Christ, not one complaint, not one iota of, man, what has this got to do with me? All I'm here is for you. My brother and sister in Christ, how many times during the day do you and I complain? According to statistics, I'm just telling you the statistics, that the average person complains three times every 15 minutes. That's an old survey. Let's be honest. My brother in Christ, how many of you have already complained that it's too cold in church? I digress. I find it quite comfortably, thank you very much. My brother and sister in Christ, how many of us complain because of the amount of time that we spend doing this, that, and the other? We complain that it's too hot, and we live in South Louisiana. We complain that it's too humid. We only have two seasons. It's either humid or less humid. We complain it's too cold, and then we complain we can't wait for summer, and then summer comes and wish it was cooler. Man, we complain about the weather. Just wait a couple minutes, it'll change. My brother and sister Christ, if it is true that we complain every 15 minutes, at least three or four times, Yet a man carries the cross for three hours, he's on it for another three, and not one time do we hear him complain. Not one sin is committed by him, his mother, or St. John, even Mary Magdalene for that matter. My brother and sister in Christ, here you and I sit. The problem is, is that you and I are too quick to complain. We're too quick to judge, and we justify it. Well, I, you know, I'm just saying. Well, I'm just a realist, Father. Well, no, you, Father, you understand, I'm just telling you the facts. Let's cut to the core. You're complaining. You're just justifying the grounds in which you make the complaint. My brother and sister in Christ, I'm telling you, sometimes it's better for you and I just to suck it up and say nothing. Whenever the good Lord gives you a challenge, whenever the good Lord gives you a cross to carry, remember this. Imagine that this is a valve. It's a jar full of grace. And if for every cross that he gives you, for every challenge that he gives you, for every consequence that you got to go through that has nothing to do with you, he gives you this full of grace. And at the very bottom is a little valve. And every time you and I complain, he just opens it as the grace begins to temper. And when it's all said and done, by the time we get finished complaining, there's no grace left because all we did was complain the whole time he gave us the cross. If he doesn't give you and I the cross, we will never grow. This is why he gives you and I the cross, because we're too complacent. We're too lazy. He knows we like object mediocrity. So if you want to expand your ability to loving, then you're going to have to grow. And the only way to get you and I to grow is through challenge. The only way you and I get better at something is that we got to work harder at it. What you put into the mass is what you get out of it. So at the end of the day, if you want to grow in love of Christ, then you got to be willing to pick up your cross and follow him. St. Paul's words, not mine. We follow a crucified Christ. My brother Christ, you and I need to sometimes just stop complaining. Just peel it like a grape and eat it and be done with it. I leave you with the words of Lou Holtz. When you go to complain to somebody, 20% of the people aren't listening. 80% of the people are glad it's happening to you and not them. Amen? Amen. 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 There you go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.